the way we cool uh, patients, uh, and especially those with severe brain injuries, uh, has traditionally been with surface cooling techniques, cooling blankets. Uh, in addition, we may apply uh, uh, ice packs uh, in the axilla, under the armpits, or in the groin areas where uh, there's uh, a, a great deal of blood flow so that you can affect the, the blood and cool the blood more quickly. Um, more recently, uh, in children and especially in babies, uh, people have been using uh, cooling helmets, if you will, or cooling caps where uh, they put plastic caps around the, the head of the infant and circulate cold water through those helmets. Uh, and uh, even more recently, we've uh, developed uh, devices where we can insert intravenous catheters with a, a closed circuit system where we can circulate ice water through sausage-shaped balloons on those catheters. And so as the blood passes by those balloons, the blood is cooled. Uh, and uh, that seems to be, at least to date, the most effective or most efficient way of cooling people quickly. Several of us, including myself and, and Guy Clifton years ago, uh, sort of arbitrarily decided that we would uh, just cool for 24 to 48 hours. And we did that because of two things. One, we thought that the maximum degree of metabolic change in the brain after trauma was during that first day or so after injury, which is what we were going after. Uh, and secondly, we knew that the longer you cooled, the greater the possibility that the patient was going to develop an infection or a pneumonia. The, the investigators in Japan have uh, used hypothermia uh, for as long as necessary in order to keep the intracranial pressure low. So in some of their studies, uh, Shiyazaki uh, for one and uh, um, uh, Hayagashi uh, for another, they have, they've taken cooling out to as long as two weeks. Um, but if you look at their clinical trials, uh, their rates of pneumonia are double or triple what they have been for Dr. Clifton in my studies. The risks associated with, uh, with hypothermia are, are, are actually pretty minimal and, and pretty clinically insignificant. Um, uh, they depend on, uh, on the um, intensity of cooling or how low you take the temperature. It also depends on how long you cool the individual. Uh, so we know that hypothermia does um, uh, suppress the immune response of the body. Uh, you, you, even simple things like clearance of secretions in the lungs are slowed, and, and so you're more prone to a pneumonia the longer you're cool. Um, we also know that the most severe complications of hypothermia are seen only when temperature drops below 85 degrees Fahrenheit.